We're getting back into the movies today with the first ever Star Wars spin-off, so let's talk about some Black Series figures. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony. Now today we're talking about Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and this film I absolutely love. It came out at such a good point in my like Star Wars history, if you like, where I was fresh off of being reintroduced to the series through The Force Awakens, and I was ready for more Star Wars. And then Rogue One comes along and it completely blows my mind. I went to the midnight screening with a couple of my best friends. I remember there was a mad lady there and I also remember the movie started in 2D and then someone got up and left and complained and then we had to start the movie again and see it in 3D. It was a madhouse. I got so many great memories associated with this movie. It just, it's just awesome. And in terms of the Black series, Rogue One has kind of a notorious history because those first few figures, the Jyn Ersos, the Cassian Andors, the director Krennix, they became absolutely legendary peg warmers. I mean, these figures were everywhere. Like, they couldn't give them away. They were sitting in like Five Below. They all found their way into Ollie's. And that probably makes you think that there isn't a ton of demand for Rogue One figures in the Black series, but you'd be wrong. With the recent success of the Andor series, there's been a tremendous amount of interest in the characters that were introduced in Rogue One. Characters that we're probably going to encounter again in season two of the show. And besides this, even before Andor came out, Rogue One made kind of a triumphant return to the Black Series when the entire Rogue One crew was updated with photoreal faces, and the added inclusion of Bodhi, Saw Gerrera, Galen Erso, and Antok Merrick to just round out the cast. So there's definitely potential for more Rogue One figures, and that's what we're talking about today. I'm bringing you my top five wish list for characters from Rogue One that I would like to see come to the Black Series. Now, as per usual with these lists, I'm going to be following following my regular rules, which is these are basic releases or deluxe releases. We're not talking about Haslabs, we're not talking about vehicles. These are just characters that I would like to see come to the line. So with all that in mind, let's not waste any time. Let's get into a few honorable mentions. Firstly, for the honorable mentions, I'd like to see Hurst Ramadi come to the line. Now, this pick is kind of important because I'm sure those of you who followed my wishlist series before will know I'm a big fan of bad guys. Like, my lists are usually heavy heavily populated with bad guys. This is the only bad guy on this list, so pay attention to that. Ramadi is someone who is just in the background most of the time. I believe he's in the Death Star conference meeting. He shows up a couple of times in Rogue One. I just think he'd be a cool addition to the Imperial Officers lineup of the Black Series. I also pitched this idea before of a Builder Diorama idea, because I'm massively against Builder figures, because I can't stand them, but the idea of building up background or world building materials, I keep bringing up tables and desks because I'm a big fan of tables, I guess. But this idea could work well for Romani. It's kind of a background character and you can put him with something, like part of the conference table for the Death Star. I mean, there's a reason why it's the channel logo. It's a cool table and I would like one. Finally, for honorable mentions, I'm bringing him up again. It's Bail Organa. I've said this before. We've all been here before. We all know why I want Bail Organa in the Black series, but specifically the Rogue One version of Bail Organa where he's like, he's clearly been through some stuff, man. Like, Jimmy Smith's really portrayed, like, a run-down and wearied version of Bale, who has just been, he's been fighting the good fight for so long, he just looks so fed up, but he's still doing it. And I think it's a really unique look for Bale, and I feel like if we're gonna do Bale Organa in the Black series, and we're not gonna do the young and healthy Revenge of the Sith Bale Organa, then give me this one. Give me, like, a, a background, withered, old veteran who's just still still fighting the good fight and is moments away from a tragic end to his career. Honorable mentions out of the way, let's get into the list itself. Coming in at number five, we have General Davids Draven. Now this guy was a piece of work in the movie. There's a real fresh perspective in modern Star Wars that gives you a look at how the different factions of the Rebel Alliance work. And Draven is very much on the side of, we need to start taking definitive action against the Empire. And we need 
start doing it now. The guy was a little trigger happy. I mean, I hesitate to say warmongering, but he was pretty close. And this is an idea that we're exploring even further now that we're getting into the Andor series. But what Draven represents to me in the Black series would be a look at rebel leadership. Because I bring this up quite a lot, where there's a lot of bad guy leadership in the line, and there's a lot of Jedi in the line. And you get, like, your main characters, you get, you know, Han, Luke, and Leia, and that lot. But in terms of actual rebel leadership, who do we have? I think we've got Admiral Akbar, and that's about it. Draven could be the start of something new in the Black series, giving us more of Rebel High Command. And I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna pitch the idea of the Builder Diorama. With these, they're not like lesser known characters, because they're very high up in the chain of command, but maybe they're characters that people wouldn't be tremendously excited for, so put something else in the box with them. Maybe something like a, a Rebel Recon Station, where he's receiving encrypted transmissions, or you know, a little headset that he could be listening to, or something like that. Or, let's go there with my big idea, the big round table from the Rebel Headquarters on Yavin. I'm here again, I'm asking for a table in the Black Series again. Here we go. Draven has such a unique style, you kind of look at him and you're like, he's a good guy, and you can see that he's a good guy, but he's not the best person, and you can kind of read that on him. You can kind of read that he's a little more extreme than the rest of Mon Mothma's little division, like the Yavin division of the Alliance. With Andor bringing so many kind of like basic human characters into the line that kind of look like they could be extras from G.I. Joe, I feel like we could expand those characters and elevate those displays by including characters like General Draven. So yeah, I think the real selling point on this would be great opportunity to include some really innovative accessories, whether it's just rebel spy tech or whether you finally give me what I'm asking for and give me a table. But for all these reasons, General Draven comes in at number five. A decision needed to be made to lure our forces into a final battle to destroy us once and for all. At number four, we have General Jan Dodonna. It's another rebel leader. You're starting to see a pattern. The pattern will continue. Dodonna is kind of legendary in the Alliance. He's one of the main generals who leads the military strikes in the war against the Empire, and he is just so well known. Even Thrawn knows who Dodonna is. Of course, he got his main appearance giving the Death Star briefing in A New Hope, but Dodonna does show up in Rogue One. He is there. And I've always loved the way he looks. Just this grizzled old veteran with a beard halfway down his face. And you're like, this guy's got to be like, what, 70s, pushing 80s, and he's still getting involved? That really speaks volumes to the drive of the Rebel Alliance. This, this is a lifetime career for them. They're going to keep on going until they are stopped by the Empire or until they win. Dodonna just sums that up. He's a classic Rebel leader, and I feel like it's an opportunity for another fantastic fantastic human head sculpt. I mean, that beard is gonna be incredible. Maybe... <laughs> I just had a moment of like, what about a soft goods beard? No, that would be terrible. But I'm definitely envisioning like a soft goods robe for him because he wears very like, very flowing robes. He looks almost like a religious leader more than like a rebellion leader. I always wondered, is this just like the rebellion's chaplain who's coming in to, to give a speech before the battle? He has that kind of vibe about him. And that's one of the reasons why I think he'd be a brilliant addition to the Black series. He would really diversify the rebel display from just a bunch of blokes holding guns. And here he goes again, it could be another component of my Builder Diorama idea for the Rebellion's leaders. I had this idea with the Separatist leaders, and the Rebellion is another faction that needs leaders represented beyond just, like, the main characters of the movies. Because, yeah, they're important, they are front and center for the actual drama of the movies, but in terms of the actual structure of the Rebel Alliance, we're missing so many important characters from the top of that pyramid. In terms of accessories, give me a data pad, give me something, I don't know, something almost political, like something that really identifies him as a leader. But yeah, really nail that head sculpt, give me a really cool soft goods looking design. I can't believe I'm sitting here asking for soft goods. I never used to like soft goods, and yet here I am saying that would really elevate the figure. It would take what could be a very basic sort of cone figure and really elevate it to the next level. But yeah, here I am asking for soft goods 
says, I'm asking for an old man. General Dodonna comes in at number four. So you've told us. At number three, we have Admiral Radus. It's another rebel leader. Surprise, surprise. Who's shocked? But it's an alien rebel leader. I know when I saw Radus on screen for the first time, just getting to see another Mon Cala member of the Rebellion High Command was just brilliant to me. We know from the comics that the Mon Cala became very heavily involved in the Rebellion at an early stage because of the Empire's attempts to essentially oppress or destroy their world. So I feel like Radus is an absolutely essential member of the Rebellion to include in the Black Series. And of course, we all know this toy line does a fantastic job with alien head sculpts. I'm pretty sure I say it at least once a video at this point, but they do. They already have done with Admiral Akbar. Radus has such a unique design where you can tell he's the same species as Akbar, but he's independent and he is unique. He's got almost more of a bulging chin than he has a bulging head. He looks very kind of, I don't know, it looks like a grizzled old war veteran, like he's got a, what would be a beard on a human and it's, it's his neck because he's a fish man. Aside from the head, I feel like we could get a lot of potential reuse out of that Return of the Jedi Admiral Akbar because they wear pretty much the same outfit. It's not quite to the level of the modal nodes and the entire Bith species where they're all just wearing black shirt, grey trousers. <laughs> the entire species just has one wardrobe look. But I feel like you could really, I don't know, maybe bulk him up a little bit, but use the same overlay and then really go to town on that head sculpt and give me something beautiful. Shiny heads in the Black Series are kind of a modern problem, but I feel like with Radus it wouldn't be so much of a problem because it would give him kind of a, kind of a damp look to him. He's, he looks amphibian, so, you know, let's just give him kind of a damp look and let's not just, <clears throat> let's not worry too much about the shine on the face. In terms of accessories for Radus, I mean, again, you could throw in a data pad. Apparently, I've got a thing for tables and data pads. That's what I want in the Black Series. I'm kind of, I'm over guns. Just give me a, just give me Star Wars iPads and I'll be happy. But if you really want to knock this one out of the park, I know something that you could do. I don't know how feasible it would be, but I've mentioned in the past about how we have so many bad guy thrones in the Black Series. We've got Snoke, we've got Jabba, we've got the Emperor. What about Radus in his captain's chair? I feel like that would be awesome. Like that's definitely like a deluxe set and I almost shudder to think how it would go together. Actually looking at it in my head, like on my mental screen, I'm seeing like a convention exclusive box that's got like specific cardboard around it and then it's got the chair mounted in the middle. And I'm seeing a very vivid picture and I like the vivid picture and I can see myself dropping a ton of money on the plastic realization of the vivid picture that I'm seeing. Admiral Radus comes in at number three. Rogue One. May the Force be with you. At number two, we have Benthic Two Tubes. We're getting away from the Rebel Leaders and we're sticking with the alien head sculpts because this guy has such a unique look to him that I feel like it would be absolutely gorgeous in Black Series form. The addition of Saw Gerrera to the Black Series really broadened the perspective for the kinds of Rebel figures that you could include. So why not get started with some Rebel Partisans? I mean, we're seeing them more and more in Andor and I feel like they're gonna play an even bigger role next season, but Rogue One was almost their last stand. You know, it's the last that we're ever going to see them in the timeline because they all go out on Jeddah. Unfortunate, but they all have such unique looks to them. And I feel like an advantage that the Rebellion has over the Empire in terms of how toyetic they are is they have such a broad diversity of alien life within their ranks. It just opens up so much potential for incredible Black Series figures. Two Tubes is just absolutely great. I feel like somebody brought him up in the comment section back on the Andor video, and you are absolutely right. We need to get this guy in the Black Series because he just looks so unique, and he would really stand out in a display where you've got a bunch of human heroes, and then you've just got this incredibly designed alien character lurking behind them. He's always just kind of lurking and standing in the background, really just diversifying the shot. And I almost don't need anything special to go with him. Just give him a really cool looking gun and I will be happy. I will drop the retail price on him in a heartbeat. Benthic Two Tubes comes in at number two. So Leo, Smolensk, Fugasuna. We're in the middle of nowhere. We need to get to Jeddah City. 
What part of urgent message do you guys not understand? <laughs> but the number one character from Rogue One A Star Wars Story that I need to see come to the Black Series, you've probably seen it coming given the running theme of rebel leadership, it's Mon Mothma. I am once again appearing before you to demand a Mon Mothma figure. We got a fantastic Genevieve O'Reilly Mon Mothma figure from the Andor line and I am incredibly happy with it. I am legitimately fighting the urge to include her in the top 10 best of the year when I get round to writing that list. Because I know it's a traffic cone of a figure, it doesn't matter to me, it's beautiful. And I feel like this Rogue One Mon Mothma could take it to another level. Genevieve O'Reilly's take on Mon Mothma is incredibly unique and it, it's very well depicted through her incredibly diverse wardrobe. But what's really missing for me right now in the Black series is Mon Mothma in her classic white robes that counter so beautifully against the black robes of the Emperor. She is so important to the story. She is the founder of the Rebellion. She is the Yang to the Emperor's Yin. It is just perfect. And I need more Mon Mothma in my display. I will never stop going on about how important Mon Mothma is. The reason I put Mon Mothma at the number one spot on my Rogue One list is because Rogue One really opened the door of potential for what we could see modern day Star Wars. We saw or long since deceased characters like Tarkin being brought back to life using CG. We also saw returning cast members like Jimmy Smits coming back as Bail Organa. It opened the door to seeing Bail more. And seeing Genevieve O'Reilly reprise the role that was cruelly cut from Revenge of the Sith was just mind blowing to me. Obviously, I had seen all the deleted scenes back in the day, so I knew who she was and I knew what the story behind her characterization was but it was so fantastic and it really opened my mind to this character in particular. And I think it's probably what started me off on my Mon Mothma obsession is just seeing her in Rogue One, seeing her come back and now seeing her become such an important part of the Rebellion's early story. I need to see that on my shelf. I need to have a proper classic white robes, long necklace Mon Mothma and I will be so, so pleased with it. In my perfect world where I get get my builder diorama of like a rebel command table, this would be the centerpiece. Like this would be the, the component that came with the main holographic display or was just the big box in the middle of it that had the main component of the display. I just, I can see Mon Mothma standing in the middle of this box and just this round section of table. Like maybe it's got like, am I pushing the boat out too far to ask for lighting components? Cause she's always lit from below when she's standing at these tables and it always looks so, so cool. And I would love to get that in the Black Series. I don't know, like I say, I don't know if electronics is maybe pushing it too far, but just give me like something that I could stick an LED under and just have it illuminate her and I will be so, so pleased. I'm literally just gonna sit here gushing over this character if I continue for much longer. So I'm gonna cut myself off. Mon Mothma is the number one character from Rogue One A Star Wars Story that I need to see come to the Black Series. Series. I'm sorry. Without the full support of the council, the odds are too great. So there you have it. Those were five characters from Rogue One A Star Wars Stories that I would love to see come to the Black Series. So let me pass this subject off to you. I realized recently I keep forgetting to say this at the end of my video. What do you think? What would you like to see come to the line from Rogue One? As kind of a fun little question here, who got the best deal on a Rogue One figure back when these guys were like peg warming everywhere? I know my wife got me the original Baze and Chirrut from Five Below, so I've got five dollars for those guys. On the opposite end of the scale, I think the day that I started to get clued on to the fact that FYE was a massive con disguised as an entertainment store was the day that I saw Jin Erso on that shelf for $35. Like, where, do, where do you get off thinking that you can charge $35 for a Jin Erso figure? I don't think so. Next time on the Wishlist series, we finally made it. We made it to the original 1977 Star Wars A New Hope. I can 
cannot wait to talk about this one. It's fairly well represented in the Black series, and I'm not gonna sit here and list off a bunch of, like, incredibly vague, how the heck do you know what that character's name is picks. I've got some pretty, I think, obvious picks for that list. So join us when we return for that. I don't mind saying that the original trilogy wish lists were three of the hardest wish lists to put together when I came up with this series because they are so well represented already. It was really hard to like, I don't know, choose between characters and be like, can I pick this guy or is he too obscure? Is he too obscure to even bother asking for? So we got some cool ones coming down the line. In the meantime, however, I've been Grand Moff Tony. Those were my top five Black Series wish list picks for Rogue One A Star Wars Story. You may subscribe when ready. In <coughs> <coughs> God damn it. It's his neck, because he's a man. He's a. I said it again, didn't I? Crap, bollocks. Shit, piss ass. <laughs>